In a far-off solar system, a planet that's setting the world of astronomy alight. It's far too remote to be photographed, but this artist's impression paints a picture for us. It's thought to be a rocky planet, bigger than Earth and perhaps with oceans on the surface. The experts say it's in orbit around its parent star at just the right distance to make it suitable for life. It's one a UFO mystery at one of the nation's busiest airports. Several pilots, apparently, and United Airlines workers at Chicago's O'Hare swear they saw one, a UFO. 1995, NASA stops airing live broadcasts from shuttle missions after UFO footage has been made public, creating a controversy about how much NASA really knows about their existence. Looks like you got an object right in front of you, Mark. Can you look out there? I'm not sure what you're talking about. Never mind. The surveys were initially sparked by a mysterious object floating under the spacecraft yesterday. Okay, there it is, uh, slightly uh, above, between the rudder and the upper portion of uh, the uh, right over spot. Yeah, we see it, Dick. Many scientists look at the SETI program and they say, see? We've scanned the heavens, and we see no evidence of any intelligent life in outer space. First of all, we've only scanned perhaps 100 light years from the planet Earth in some detail. Our galaxy is 100,000 light years across, and galaxies are tens of millions of light years distant. Second of all, we've only looked at frequencies near the frequency of hydrogen. That's silly. This goes back to the person who, who lost his key. A person who drops his key will often look next to a lamppost. But if you say to the man, why are you looking next to a lamppost? You dropped your key over there. The person will say, well, that's where the light is. Also, when you communicate across vast distances, we sometimes take a signal and chop it up. And then we send each piece and it reforms at the other end. That's how the internet works. Email is chopped up, sent through various cities, and is reformed at the other end. But if you were to intercept one fragment of email, you'd get nonsense, gibberish, until it's reformed. Therefore, in outer space, they probably send signals not on one frequency, but perhaps on the entire spectrum, so that a passing star will not interrupt the entire signal. Then at the other end, they reassemble the signal. If you were to listen in on their signal, you would hear gibberish, nonsense. In other words, we could be in the middle of an intergalactic conversation and we wouldn't even know. I'm Zechariah Sitchin. I devoted a lifetime to the study of ancient civilizations. A basic conclusion of my writings uh, has been that those who gave mankind civilization were visitors to Earth from another planet. In 1851, in what is now known as Iraq, archaeologist and explorer Sir Austin Henry Layard discovered a library with 22,000 tablets containing what we know to be the earliest writings on Earth. The writings date back to over 6,000 years ago when the region was known as Mesopotamia, Sumer, and Babylon. Amongst these vast writings is a story which mirrors the book of Genesis in the Bible. It tells a story of a great flood which reshaped the face of the planet Earth and all of her inhabitants. It tells a story of a tower built and the creation of the spoken word. One of these scrolls includes a star map of what appears to be a sun and its planets. The writings include detailed descriptions and maps of our solar system matching what we know today and beyond. It includes a tenth planet in an orbit between Mars and Jupiter. It is written that the tenth planet Nibiru was thrust into our solar system and collided with the planet Tiamat. The remaining bulk of Tiamat over time became Eridu the Earth as we know it, and the rest of her became the asteroid belt. In retrograde to the other nine planets, Nibiru took orbit around our Sun in a long ecliptic or apogee. Lasting 3,600 years, it passes between Mars and Jupiter. In recent years, based on the patterns of our known solar system, astronomers have been looking for a planet with this same orbit. In search of this planet, they discovered the planet Pluto. The search continues. According to the ancient texts, this detailed information was given to them by the Anunnaki, or those who from heaven to earth came.